Welcome to the Dirty Side of Leadership podcast with Ron and Kristen, where leadership meets entertainment. This podcast features stories with names and certain aspects that have been changed to keep submissions private. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Dirty Side of Leadership podcast. In this episode, we are going to discuss onboarding nightmares. Now, onboarding is a term that gained popularity several years ago and for the most part replaced the word orientation. A lot of large and small businesses have onboarding programs, but unfortunately, we've learned that many either do not follow their own protocol or they don't have an onboarding process at all. Ron, I know you have some onboarding nightmare stories that you are going to share with us today. Yeah, as always, our groups have uh, sent some stories, and then we've got some others. But before we go into that, Kristen, I'm going to thank everyone who's ordering the Forward High Performance Planner. Uh, We're really excited about that. It's on Amazon. It's number four, W-A-R-D, High Performance Planner. And Kristen, I thought about you because I picked mine up the other day and I wanted to write. I had an appointment coming up and I thought, man, I've got to wait until January. I know. So uh, I can't but, wait till somebody books me in January for something so I can write it down. <laughs> well, that's what I, I guess what you just prompted me. I'm booked in January and forgot to put it in there. Oh, hey, there you, you go. There's just solved my problem. Chance. Yeah. Break I can't it in. think if you've got people on your Christmas list that have everything, I can't think of a better li- gift right, right. Uh, than a planner. But I agree. that's just me. <laughs> All right. You're that guy. Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> Let's get into uh, some of these nightmare stories. Yes. And I'm sure everyone listening, either you've had to work up an onboarding program that's not that simple, or mm-hmm. you've had that nightmare of day one and you don't know what to do. Right. So uh, we're going to cover that. But this comes from Kit. Uh, in our Facebook group, it says, my first day of work, another new officer and I were meeting with the agency's HR representative. She was explaining to us what our starting pay was going to be and how step and discretionary increases worked. She kept contradicting herself and telling me things differently from what was articulated in my offer letter, parentheses, that she wrote. So I asked several clarifying questions over the course of about 20 minutes because what she was saying didn't make any sense to me. She finally looked at me and then shouted, quit asking questions. <laughs> oh, and, my <laughs> gosh. Hey, Kristen ended that, I mean, uh, Kit ended that part with OMG, and then she said three years later she was fired. What's that they say about karma? Ha ha. Uh, three years, that's, that's a long time to yeah, put up that, with that. Yeah, that. That, that is a lot of torture. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if that's something to brag about. It took three years to get rid of a cancer like that. But um, yeah, that's bad. If your offer letter says one thing and day one they're saying another, you yeah. got a problem. <laughs> you got a problem. Yikes. Well, we did a lot of research on this topic and found some really good information. If you guys want to go check it out yourself, clickboarding.com is a great source. So basically, onboarding in general works like this. Employees start a new job or role, and they might experience no pre-boarding and have no idea what to expect. I mean, everyone here that is listening and you and I, Ron, we've either onboarded people or we've been onboarded. It's just, it, it can be either we were onboarded poorly or mediocre or amazing. We still remember it today, but everybody's onboarded. The thing is, that's your that's your chance. We always say dress to impress, right? Well, onboarding, that's your chance to really shine when it comes to onboarding your new employees. And when you're being onboarded, you should have high expectations of that. Um, and it's very telling. I want to say even now, especially with this remote environment, Ron, I mean, people are working remote. They're starting day one remote. Uh, one, I mean, I transitioned from having my entire team in person to having my entire team remote. And yeah. and I did hire a few people while we were remote. So there were, it, it's definitely more complex. But you, you have to work that out. You can't just forget about them and not reach out and, uh, and not provide them with onboarding. I mean, we've been hearing some nightmares about that. Yeah, and even pre-boarding, we're going to talk about that, getting yeah, people ready yeah. for onboarding. Exactly. Uh, as you know, a friend of mine, just this just happened, started a new job, started on Tuesday, had done some preliminary stuff on Monday, which already the HR person and the coordinator had already told her two different things, salary and everything else. So I texted her to say, hey, how's day one going? This was Tuesday. And uh, we're recording on a Wednesday. She said, 
I have no idea. I haven't heard from anyone. I can't get into the system. So it was 1130 that day before she even talked to anyone. Oof. And it was late that afternoon when she finally was able to log into the system. She That's basically bad. got a computer in the mail. Her pre-boarding was she got a computer in the mail. That was it. Oh, so uh, what a nightmare. That's rough. Well, let's far break cry down. from the gift basket I used to provide <laughs> to my people. <laughs> That's right. That's cool, though, that you did that. Yeah, hey. Um, I sent them pictures of me, like I signed. I'm joking. That's, that's okay, first class. <laughs> um, the let's let's look at the problem first. We're always solution minded, right. but let's look at some problems. And we have some nightmare, some more nightmare stories that we'll just summarize. But yeah. one of the first problems with onboarding is poor mentors. Mm. You do not want to align a new employee with someone that is unmotivated, someone that may be burned out, someone yeah. that's not excited about the mission. And we had a story that said, uh, when I joined a previous company, I sat down uh, in the office with the CEO and I was handed a laptop and a job description and was pretty much told to get started. And I think that's a common <laughs> oh, theme. Man. No agenda, no training materials. But they were supposed to get mentored by the person outgoing that position, the person leaving that position. But it turns out that person was bitter and basically didn't provide any information. Mm -hmm. So we see that play out all the time. And I can tell you, Chris, and I'm hesitant to say this, but I took on a position as a division chief. There was only three others, but they were on DC and I was in Charleston. And academy director is the title I used, but it wasn't an official title. Mm. So imagine this, I step in on day one, and I kid you not, there was no onboarding process because I already worked for the agency. So they assumed, hey, he's been down there at the academy. He can oh, run it. Man. There was I started getting budget phone calls, personnel. It was it was a nightmare. Right. So I made sure the person who replaced me that I really worked with them. I know I didn't show them everything, but I, I poured as much time as I possibly could because of that very issue. I didn't want that to happen yeah. to her. Yeah, no, that's huge. And I'll just you know, I want to just jump in and share also, that happened to me when I went from being a uh, growth market leader in New York, which is basically a higher level banker, to being a branch manager back here in Oregon. And it was just expected that I would know all the ins and outs of the yeah. branch manager role from, from plug and play, right? Well, it's a completely different region. We, everything operates very different in the Northwest versus New York City. And the role was not what I was functioning in. So that assumption that all too many leaders make that, oh, they're internal. They're just going to plug and play. Not so much if it's not the same no. position and not the same region. There's so many complexities in there that need to be factored in. God, that's so true. Chris Isn't and I had bad? a super card, $500,000 credit card. And didn't even know we st we were starting to bring students, but I had to take a training to sign off on that kind of money. Oh, and uh, wow. it, all that stuff happened. I mean, I worked yeah. probably 12 hours, 13 hours a day the first, at least the first two Just months. Just to get it all months. figured out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. So the second thing that people are saying is a uh, part of a horrible onboarding experience is communication, lack thereof, or no communication. Yeah. And this is some of the feedback we received that sounds very familiar with something you just shared, but clearly it's a trend. After accepting my job offer via email, I didn't hear anything from anyone for 14 days. I followed up with HR and they couldn't remember who I was or when I was even supposed to start, I immediately started looking for a new job. Yikes. That's, that's <laughs> I'm sorry, bad. but that one almost made me laugh. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's comical in a horrific way that a company would even run that way. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, the next one is you've already kind of clarified. It's onboarding that's just orientation. In other words, there's no yeah. depth. They're just mm -hmm. orienting you. And this one says, I was pretty excited about my new role. I'd been transferred within my company to a new location for a new role. Everyone greeted me on the first day, and I was taken through some basics with my manager and senior colleagues. I felt like we were off to a really good start. Training was in person at that point. But by day two, it was made clear that no one had any time for me. It was a real letdown, and I regretted my decision to change oh, yeah. roles. Yeah. So that's, that's why, common. by the way, that is one of the or, the reasons they changed the word orientation onboarding. So mm, it would yeah. try to provide more depth. 
Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I Kristen. think that's great. So many companies have onboarding checklists, and I know that there's company provided ones generally, and then leaders should also have their own checklist that they create that's specific to their team, uh, to their department. So that's something that really should be should be looked into. If you're not already doing that, get a checklist going for onboarding to make sure you're not missing anything. And really, you know, this th- that last one, Ron, I think it's so sad that it's, it, I've seen this so much, so often, where people just feel like they're a nuisance. It should be exciting to have a new teammate on board. You, it, it should be such a great thing because they're going to help you with your workload. So for them to feel yeah. that they're really taking up your time, your valuable time, and not a good look. Number four, I'll jump into this. Um, a lack of tools needed. And oftentimes those tools are out there, but they just don't know what they don't know. And so your onboarding needs to include pointing them in the direction of where these tools are that are going to equip them to be successful in their jobs. One of the bits of feedback we got here was due to bureaucracy and red tape, I didn't have access to all the systems I needed to perform my job for two months. <laughs> my God. I was livid and bored. And uh, yikes. Yeah. And I've been saying yikes a lot because I just I can't fathom how these places are running like this. I can't either. I can't either. And I guarantee you that marries over into their day to day operations. You can't oh, tell me that you're an excellent company and you get a poor onboarding. There's no right. way yeah, you can't no. reconcile that to Mm-mm. me. Uh, the next one is uh, completely clueless. And um, (laughs) this has a funny story. It says, when I arrived, my manager told me to visit HR and get my benefits paperwork. They didn't have my name on file, and I was given a bunch of stuff to fill out over a matter of weeks. When I asked for help understanding the benefits package on offer, they seemed annoyed by my questions. I wasn't able to get help from my colleagues either. I don't understand why a company would offer benefits package and then, uh, you know, basically not know how to communicate it. And that's exactly what happened to the... uh, my friend who had started that new job in pre-boarding the HR manager and the other person conflicted information. It was just, it was really sad. So I'm going to be anxious to see how the actual job goes because of the poor onboarding. Yeah. So don't be completely clueless. That's no. what we're saying. Yeah, exactly. And I've got, I've got a doozy for you on along the lines of, you know, another one here, lack of internal communication. There was a point where, I was a branch manager at the time and I wanted to go into investment banking. And so I'd been talking with the regional director at that point. He offers me to come on board and to get licensed, all of that Mm -hmm. under him. Within literally a few days, he quits, goes off to this new investment firm. And when I inquired with leadership that was stepping in in his place, they had no idea and did not honor what he had had laid out. Um, they, they were just like, sorry, he's not here any longer. We weren't privy to that conversation. I was gone after that. I, I couldn't wait to leave because nothing yeah. can put a bad taste in your mouth like having an offer presented and have no evidence of it when that yeah. person leaves. So lack of internal communication. This is another bit of feedback that we got through our group here. I started working for a company and the representative who hired me provided me with salary and a few other details. However, when I spoke with HR, they told me something different. When I called the representative, she criticized the HR person and said, what in the world is wrong with her? (laughs) Gosh, then I spoke with HR again and she didn't know what the other person was talking about. It was so confusing that I finally managed to get both of them on the phone to get the information that I needed. Ron, what kind of businesses do this? I mean, we it, it's absolutely insane. I, I can't even. Yeah. So so this new person being onboarded has to has to work their magic to get these two imbeciles on the yeah. phone to communicate with each other. Wow, I'm surprised they stayed. You know, Kristen, as you know, I I've been um, commissioned to develop an onboarding process, and this is for a hospital. I want to hear about uh, it. Well, what I realized, number one, is I've got a direct line of communication. So Mm -hmm. I worked on pre-boarding, which was lacking. The pre-boarding is all the things you have to do, the, the things you fill out. You don't want someone, this is what companies do. 
They, and instead of people being motivated, they end up doing paperwork the whole day. Mm, that stuff yeah. can be done electronic. You could be right. sending that, have someone that can follow up with questions. So the first thing I did is cleaned up their pre-boarding. And, and I feel very confident that it's going to work like a charm now. Yeah. But the second thing that I didn't see, and by the way, this is the norm for most companies. You're right about a checkoff sheet. But the problem is the checkoff sheet is, you know, access to this. Here's the policy on this. Right. And they did not teach intercommunication. They didn't mm, teach. Yeah. And, and this is the one thing. And if you work with a hospital, you need to contact us. We can help you. But one of the things is they taught nurses to communicate with doctors a little bit with patients did not really cover communication with each other and peers, mm, but also did not help nurses communicate with family and friends of patients. And oh, a wow. lot of a nurse's That's time. Huge. Yeah, I had to interview nurses, by the way, to start putting this together. But a lot of their time is people coming to the front desk asking for a nurse, family Absolutely. members coming. Hey, can you tell me what I need to do for my – and that's never even discussed. So right. what I did is we put in soft skills training. Oh, Not only do you amazing. have to have the baseline of information, but you've got to be able to – and we looked at the stakeholders, internal and external stakeholders. And that's part of – and you've got a mentor that watches you communicate and helps you deal with. It's almost like they're your customers, mm -hmm. the the family and friends of the patient. But there's nothing worse than having someone in the hospital. You go to a nurse, and the nurse just brushes you off or, you know, yeah. doesn't have an answer. Right. So I'm very confident that we found a couple of missing links that's really going to help this hospital. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point, those soft skills are, are critical. No one wants to be in the hospital in the first place. No one <laughs> wants their family members in there. It's a very sensitive time. And you you have to, you will remember a nurse that treated you poorly for a long, long time, if not forever. So that is amazing that you're touching on that because that is so incredibly valuable. So we want to dive a little further into pre-boarding new hires. Pre-boarding We've talked about this a little bit, but it's the process of starting an employee's onboarding experience before their first day. Yeah. So it can get them excited for their new job and keep them engaged until their start date. So this is the perfect time for you to send them some company swag. Everyone loves swag. Uh, water bottle, notepads, something with your logo. I mean, free stuff with logos on it. Everyone loves that. Um, and also, you want to send them an onboarding schedule so they know what to expect on day one. Yes. That's huge. People are already nervous, Kristen. You know, any, I never started a new job that I wasn't nervous. And if you walk in and no one's telling you, it's just so awkward. Yeah. And it hurts morale. It really, it really does. Uh, you know, something else on here. You want to get paperwork done ASAP. That can linger on forever. And it's just a, it's a good idea to give your new hires a head start on the administrative tasks, such as creating a company email address or completing HR paperwork so that their first day doesn't revolve around filling out documents. I know we did that at the bank. We would make sure their first day they walked in, they had access to the systems they needed. They have their email. Everything's ready to go. And that should be from when you have an offer letter, a signed offer letter, you need to start getting all that in place. That should not start when their boots are on ground or on their actual start date. That that's that would be really poor planning to do that. You know, Kristen, one other thing is um, people forgot to announce this individual. So in other words, like let's say I've worked at a company for five years and you're sitting at a desk and I don't know who the heck you are. Yeah, that is that happens in that pre-boarding and onboarding. Right. There should be yes. announcements over and over. So and so starts tomorrow. You know. Yes, that is, and maybe a little background on them. Yeah, also. Exactly. I think yes. that's important. Yes, right. I do too. Yeah. All right, we've got another thing here. Uh, give out a welcome package. They should oh, be yeah. greeted with something, and not just paperwork. That's my jam. That's your yeah. jam. Do a fruit basket, <laughs> yeah. like a gift basket. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I cook fruit cake personally. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm like, so, wow, that's usually not very popular. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to hurt thought, my feelings. I thought you. Kristen were has a heart. Everyone, Kristen I'm has like, a heart. Oh. Um, that's, maybe that's a southern thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you've already said it. People love swag, but wouldn't it be great? Yeah. You walk in. I remember someone said they work for Google, and they came home. I'm not kidding. They had this whole, and I get it. Google's got money, yeah. But they had this whole gift basket. It had Google T-shirt. It was everything. I started to apply and work one day and quit just to get the <laughs> just to get, get the stuff. swag. You know? <laughs> Heck yeah! Oh my gosh, that's that's hysterical. Yeah, you know, it's that, and it will vary depending on what environment you're in. But I know for me, I've talked about this briefly, but my welcome package, my the people I was hiring, at least for the majority of my career, they were customer facing. So they were bankers working with clients. And so I did things like gum, breath mints, chapstick, a, a water bottle to keep hydrated, like just yeah. tons of like personal effects that would just make their day more comfortable. And they wouldn't have to, you know, travel over to the Walgreens or CVS or wherever to get that stuff because I've already thought about it in advance. And um, and then a few, you know, just niceties, not necessarily necessities, but you know that it goes far. It really, it really does. I like no, that. No, it does. It does. And my daughter, by the way, works for a national Christian-based company called The Daily Grace. They sent her a welcome gift basket, but also when they premiere new products, they send their employees some of those mm, products it's, that's it's crazy yes uh, i love it so yes yep. I- anyway that's top stuff right there yep so something else that you want to focus on invo- is involving team members in the onboarding process so successful onboarding is a collaborative effort meaning it involves a variety of team members not just the hiring managers and the hr department You want to be sure that employees, managers, supervisors, and even senior leaders understand the onboarding process and how they fit into it. New hires are going to feel way more comfortable and connected to your company as a whole if you do this. No, that's awesome. We did that at the academy. We had them meet with an instructor. They met with me. I gave them the overall vision for who we are and what, you know, our mission. So it it really worked out well, but they met with different levels of people. Another thing that needs to happen is assign a buddy. You want to have someone who's checking on that person, making sure that, you know, they're functioning well, that questions are getting answered, or, you know, even if Uh, another employee don't have the answer they can direct them to the right place because when you come on board you don't know who to go to so you gotta assign a buddy to help them be successful yeah absolutely so i know i want to share what my definition of success would look like as far as onboarding is concerned and really that's i've talked about this earlier that's when you have all of the paperwork and the systems ready, the email ready to go day one. They should come in and have access to everything. That way you're able to have the niceties. You should have some type of swag, even if it's literally a pen or something with yeah. the company logo on it, something, so that they feel like they're a part of this this company that will become their family when they're there 40 plus hours a week. So my, I would also say, if they feel excited about the new role, they feel like they're a part of something and they have made connections and know who to go for or who to go to for what. That's really important. You mentioned just a minute ago that you would introduce new hires to even your leadership. And I think that's great. Uh, the only thing I ran into with that a few times is they would feel so comfortable with my leader that I would see that they would, if they saw them passing by in the hall, they would pick their brain on something Mm -hmm. when I'm in the chain of command and nothing makes me more irritated than when you break chain of command. So I think it's important to one, introduce them, but then always set the expectation of communication goes up the chain of command. Unless there's some type of ethical concern, then we understand that, right? Well, chain of command should be part of the onboarding. That should be one of the things that's explained. Yeah. This is how we communicate here. You know? Yep, exactly. All right. Um, this is my favorite out of everything we've discussed. Make the first day exciting. The This should be a big deal. Now, I'm not talking about if you're working some minimum wage job that has turnover every three minutes. But you should make that first day very exciting. The employees should welcome them. It should be a big deal. If your company means anything, if your company's got an impact, you need to have an impact on that day one when people walk in. They need to be made to feel special. This is a big deal. You're working for this great company, and we really did do that at the Academy. Plus, I had an advantage because we had uniforms. We had a lot of swag to give them. 
And uh, we just made it a really big deal when we got new people. And you could tell that everyone liked that. Yeah, I love that. And that's, you know, like like you've said before, staying true to your culture, really making sure that your culture is on display uh, during their onboarding process. Um, and that'll really set the tune for what's to come. And yep. they'll be excited about it. Absolutely. Uh, this one's important, even though it's got your name, I'm going to say it. Yeah, introduce, do it. Introduce work gradually. I think too many companies overwhelm their employees on day one. This is yeah. where we go. This is the acronyms. This is, you know, oh, and yeah. uh, you've got to space that out. And that's where that buddy can come in handy, a good supervisor, a good senior role, whoever's assigned to that. But make sure that they're catching on and don't overwhelm them on day one. Right, right. No, I completely agree. Focus on what matters. Yeah. And I know you have this down here, but checking in regularly. I know you're a m major advocate of checking in I during am. the onboarding process and not even just during onboarding, just in general. We should constantly be checking in with our employees and having that open door for them to come to us with their needs. So I think that's that's critical during this onboarding phase, though. Yeah. You have to have you have to hold yourself accountable as the leader to go check in with them. Yeah, and Kristen, as you know, we got a lot of stuff, but this is uh, mm -hmm. the last two I think we should mention. Be flexible yeah. because our onboarding did not look the same after a year because we kept, uh, you know, we were flexible. And if, if someone was getting, if they weren't catching on in an area or they we had a breakdown here, we would take them back through that again. Or, yeah. you know, if something needed to be remote, we had to be flexible at that. So you just can't be so rigid. No. You, you got to base it on people's needs and, and their personality and your mission and so forth. Right, right. It is not one size fits all. And right. that is a great point you bring up. And, you know, one of the other important things here is revisiting your onboarding process. So your onboarding process, really, to your point about flexibility, it ties in here because it's not set in stone. In fact, it's highly likely that you're going to change it from time to time. So you want to actively seek feedback from your current employees through regular surveys or conversations so you know what you're doing well and what you can improve upon. And then with that, continue to enhance the way you onboard and don't be afraid to completely revamp your process as your company yeah. evolves over time. You know, Kristen, one of, I can just remember two or three different times when a new employee went through our onboarding and I asked them, you got to make them comfortable. Like we yeah. really want to improve this. So give, give me some feedback we can use. And there were two or three times they said something very specific that I don't think me or the other managers would have thought of. Mm. So that's the beauty of talking to the actual employee who's being, you know, uh, yeah. onboarded and uh, they, they have a different perspective and that helped us improve. So, you know, Kristen, we've talked about, you know, we talked about IQ, EQ, and those are out and adaptability is in a few episodes yeah. back. And that's what this is about is being adaptable. And even though, and I would never mention the name of the hospital, but I'm saying even though I found cracks in their onboarding, I got to give them major credit for reaching out and saying yeah. we need help. Uh, we don't right. know why we're losing all of these nurses so uh the bottom line is is a lot of times you don't have all the answers but someone does but you got to right. be willing to reach out be adaptable you got to be willing to change things up so i really did respect that the person that i spoke with was just genuine like yeah. can you help us can That's you help amazing. us yeah, yeah it really is that is huge Final thoughts, Kristen. This has this probably wasn't as fun as body language, but the stories are so interesting. And I think this, though, serves to help companies, serves to help managers more than maybe anything we've ever talked about. Yeah, I agree. Because to our point in the very beginning, this touches everybody. It's not just leaders. It's it does. anyone who's ever started a job, which is all of us. We've all been through an onboarding process. And so... This is very, very important. Just like body language. We've, we're all doing it. We're all watching it. Yeah. But we've all been onboarded. So That's true. Important to pay attention. So, Kristen, as you know, I sent you some stats. We are getting a lot of downloads on this podcast. Yeah. And we've said it over and over. We are grateful. I mean, you know, that's why we're doing this. So, uh, Kristen, what can people do to help us? I haven't asked you that in a few episodes. Yeah. So, looking at the stats, and I'm, I'm coming out of a data analytics 
uh, leadership role, right? So when you look at it, what we're seeing is we're, we have a lot of viewers going to YouTube, which is wonderful because I know we're really fun to watch, <laughs> but we don't, we want you to also click into either uh, Spotify or your, your Apple iTunes, wherever you get your podcast, at least click into it and start watching or listening to us there. That will help us with our numbers so that we can become more and more visible when people are searching for a business leadership podcast. So keep doing what you're doing, but also give us those extra clicks in where in just where it's just audio. Right? I know the videos are fun. But. I forgot to tell you this, Chris, and someone <laughs> sent me a, sna a screenshot of you and I, and it said, um, she makes you look good or something like that so uh, well thanks yeah. whoever that was maybe i have a radio face who knows but anyway. oh my gosh no 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 <laughs> i'm gonna gray rock you right there ron uh, ron's rock looking me. for a compliment and I'm i was gray fishing rock i was fishing come on Kristen. <laughs> oh, i i told you when i do body language i may have said this last week but i have someone signaling me and I always in the middle of it go now flirt with me but I stop it before they do but it's so funny so to watch awkward. them thinking about how they're gonna flirt oh my gosh oh, that God. makes me uncomfortable just hearing it that would that would be like so awkward to witness the funny thing bad is, for the is person well I do too but man they start to do it like I have to oh stop them pretty gosh. quickly uh, it's, oh, it is wow. funny yeah to be All a right. fly on the wall this has been fun yes yes absolutely right. be the leader you're meant to be we'll see you next week the Dirty Side of Leadership podcast is brought to you by Forward Operations. If you'd like to book Ron or Kristen for speaking events, training, or executive coaching, visit forwardoperations.com. Be the leader you're meant to be.